Previously on Reviews.org, we just recently detailed the improvements to Wi-Fi 6, and we got a couple questions about Wi-Fi best practices. How can you speed up your home network? How can you avoid slowdowns or throttling? Those are some great questions. So here are our top six ways to boost your home Wi-Fi. All right, you know the drill by now. Reviews.org puts out great content and you want to know about it. So get clicking on the subscribe options down below. And right at the top of this video, drop us a comment with your worst network management story. You know, that time someone covered a router in some kind of metal mesh or complained about signal being poor while they had cinder block walls. Yeah, I might try to make a reaction video out of your best comments, whether connecting devices around your home or maximizing your connection to the interwebs, a healthy network is key to living that 21st century lifestyle. So let's jump right in. Number one, maintain a clear line of sight. This one's easy and you've probably heard this recommendation before, but a router takes up some space. So there's a natural tendency to use space around a router for other things too. The more you block your router, the poorer it performs. So consider your home floor plan and try to keep that router in the most central location you can with as little blocking it as possible. You're also gonna have to take a look at walls, the ceiling, the floor, and make sure you don't have weird angles that might attenuate signal. Thankfully, these days, this is pretty easy to test. You can fire up your phone, walk around your home just to see if there are any serious dropouts or dead zones. Which brings us to point number two. Sometimes extra hardware can help. If your coverage is spotty, there are ways to build home networks to fill in those gaps. You've probably heard the phrase mesh which is a way to line up nodes to cover more area. Mesh routers are a great way to cover a lot more space, and they often won't slow down your network speeds as much as older style repeaters. But in a pinch, a repeater can be handy getting signal to a trouble spot. On decent broadband, you might not be bothered by the speed hit if it gets you connected. Another solid option is to use an additional router as a different access point. From your main router, you can run an ethernet cable to a second router and you can manage a separate wireless network to plug that hole. You might need to dig into your router settings to make something like this work, but there are going to be different modes you can assign a second router. It can be another access point showing up as a unique wireless network. It could be a client mode or a bridge mode. All of these are options to help you customize what you want your final network to look like. I think these features work really well if you want to separate traffic more deliberately, like having a separate home and office wireless network. And while we're talking about router software, number three, check those settings. A router is a baby computer whose sole purpose is moving info around to other devices. There are numerous settings in there to customize. And honestly, that could be its own standalone video, so let us know if you want us to make that video. It probably won't be a short video, but settings like channel width can improve connection speed. On some routers, disabling older Wi-Fi standards can help support connections on newer devices. And it's always a good idea to make sure your router software is up to date. You don't want to be ignoring security threats on the device that handles all of the internet traffic in and out of your home. Speaking of keeping things up to date, number four, keep your hardware up to date too. You're not gonna get any benefit from Wi-Fi 6 on your fancy new phone or laptop if your router is on Wi-Fi 4. The nice thing about Wi-Fi is that it is decently backwards compatible. So it's easy to set up some gear and forget about it for a long period of time. Now, I don't think you need to be so worried about upgrading your router as frequently as the other devices on your network, like flipping your router every time you get a new phone. But if you're getting two or three generations out of date, it's worth considering an upgrade. And speaking of upgrades, number five, your cabling still matters. This is definitely a smaller point and less exciting than the actual networking hardware. But if you're working to improve the connection between devices on your home network, you might want to consider a cable upgrade. And this one actually hit a cousin of mine recently. He was using really old Cat5 Ethernet cables, which top out at 100 megabit per second data rates. Cat5e cables 
should do you better getting up to gigabit speeds and cat 6 cables should support up to 10 gigabit data rates if you haven't thought about your home cabling since the early 2000s that could be something slowing you down wrapping this list up getting back to basics number six sometimes you just gotta manage your own use for all the fancy controls and management software all of these options built into wi-fi 6 sometimes good old-fashioned communication with your family members can make the difference i know when my wife is likely to tackle some zoom calls she knows when i'm going to be streaming and we both help out with our daughter's online school just a little bit of planning helps keep us from hitting our uploads all at the same time, especially since we don't have the best upload speeds in my neighborhood. I know, sometimes you just gotta converse with the other carbon-based life forms that live in the same building as you do. But seriously, a little planning goes a long way. And there you have it. Those are my top picks for maximizing your Wi-Fi potential. Now, obviously, a lot can be said on home networking, and I'm game to dive as deep as you all want to go. So don't be shy in the comments. If this is a series you'd like to see covered in more detail, reviews.org is ready to go. And of course, stay up to date on all the happenings on this channel. We're covering smart home, smartphone, and the smartest services to stream. So don't miss out. For reviews.org, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell. Thanks so much for watching, for sharing, and subscribing, and I'll catch you all on the next video.